The second point I want to draw out from these texts is that although you must prioritize judging yourself in life, that does not imply you are never to judge others. The fact is you have a right to make righteous judgments about others. So the next time someone asks you, who are you to judge? Well, you can tell them very respectfully that you are a Christian, commanded and authorized by God to make righteous judgments about moral and spiritual issues in the lives of other Christians. This brings me to another point I want to draw from these texts we've looked at, namely that the people you are authorized to judge are professing Christians and not so much people of the world. Note in Christ's example, he speaks of you trying to pull the speck out of your brother's eye. The emphasis is on a believer seeking to point out sin in the lives of his brethren. When the New Testament calls Christians to judge in this life, it is generally in regard to them judging other professing Christians and not non-Christians. Among other texts, consider 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 through 13, where Paul makes it clear that believers really have no business judging unbelievers. As he says, For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside, purge the evil person from among you. In the context of this text is Paul impressing upon the Corinthians their near need to deal with professing believers who are in sin. But he draws attention to the fact that Christians are not to judge those outside the church. This does not mean that we cannot condemn in, in a general sense certain behavior and ideas of the world uh, that are contrary to the Bible. <clears throat> Rather, Paul is referring to how our focus is not to be on confronting non-Christians over specific sins in their life. Consider that in Paul's writings, most of his specific judgments and criticisms are towards Christians in the church. Likewise, if you read through the Gospels, most of Christ's criticisms and most intense words of condemnation are not against unbelievers who had no reverence for the Bible. Rather, his focus was on the corrupt religious leaders who had some reverence for the law and the prophets. So it should be with us when it comes to judging, our focus must not be on correcting unbelievers for all their various sins and corruptions, but it should be on dealing with the corruptions within the body of Christ itself. And the main reason we are to only to judge Christians is because we have a common ground to stand on, namely the Bible. But we don't have a common ground with unbelievers who reject God's word as their final authority. So if we start quoting scriptures to them about sin in their life, they are likely not going to care and respond well at all. But it's different with other Christians who might be in sin. For all true Christians are to have the Bible as their objective standard, which is to govern the way they think and live. And so when we uh, see another believer falling short and obeying the Bible, we have a common standard to use when we are evaluating their words and actions. 